Hi, I'm Pretty People. It's your boy Nathan Cha, and we're here today to have a little community care moment. Um, I have basically amassed seven of my favorite self care slash survival <laughs> kit moments for the holiday season. They are based on my own experience, so like I'm no expert on this. Other than, you know, like managing crisis, I'm great at that. So I just wanted to share them with you in case they can help you get through the holidays in an affirmed, empowered and amazed manner. And especially if you're around unsupportive family that doesn't quite acknowledge your existence the way you need it to. But first, let me just sip my coffee because... Yeah, yeah. My number one is getting connected. Finding any sort of outlet for your personal expression. Now, I found social media quite helpful in this. If you are just doing it for basically expressing yourself, finding like-minded people, people who look like you, think like you, that can be like super helpful. To me, over the years, this has been like a massive amount of queer joy and empowerment, finding people who just understand what I'm going through and who might be in similar situations as well. I found that people are so incredibly empathetic with you uh, and can help you and you can help them. It's just about finding that sort of solidarity if you don't have that in your physical space right now. Whatever platform works for you, it doesn't have to even be on like public. You can have a private profile if you feel safer with that. Go get on the interwebs and if it helps you, I thoroughly um, support what you're doing. My number two is making a self-care list, especially if you're someone like me who just kind of forgets what helps them best. So just like have that in a journal and have things that you know that help you, ground you, soothe you, make you feel just relaxed, especially if there's a lot of turmoil around you. So that can be anything from queer media like movies and books and magazines to like pictures of friends that understand you and see you and that you love or pictures of your chosen family that you can just like carry around and look at and remember the good times. It can be creative outlets like something I majorly do as an artist is drawing, painting, writing, anything that feels like it can be a release of your emotions. I also really like playing the ukulele so that might be something that you like no matter what other people around you say. You can just do your thing and be happy and relaxed while doing that. I know that not everyone has the possibility to wear what they want around their family especially if it's some sort of like trans non-binary thing and people are like you should rather wear this gendered item of clothing and not that gendered item of clothing because it makes the world of a difference apparently. But if you have things that you need to wear to alleviate dysphoria or feel like you were authentically expressing yourself, whatever that item may be, make sure you have it with you and maybe you can wear it in the comfort of your own room if you have one. Just like in moments where people aren't around you and you can just have a moment to yourself where you're like, yeah, this is me looking into the mirror, taking some cute selfies, posting them on the internet and being like, that's, see? It works, and that's me. Number three is playlists. Whatever your jams might be, make them into a playlist. Put that playlist on your phone, your iPod, whatever you have going on there, but make sure you have it with you so you can listen to it on the way to your family event. Make sure you're feeling powerful and affirmed. It's a little dance when no one's watching or when everyone's watching. Number four is guided meditations. Now that might just be me because <laughs> anxiety, but I can really, really, really recommend guided meditations, sleep meditations, sleep hypnosis, whatever is your thing. There's a bunch of great ones on YouTube. If you want, um, let me know in the comments below if you want me to link through to some of them. Number five is you time making sure that you take some moments for just being and sitting with yourself and your emotions. If it's sitting in a room that's yours, sitting in some room where there's no other human being, you can just be in the corner like, yes, I'm having a time right now. Or like going on a walk, exercising out in the crisp, clean air. 
and just focus on what you need. Because I think like that's one of the main priorities for getting through any rough situation is listening to your body and your mind and knowing what the entirety of you craves in that moment and making sure you give that to yourself because you deserve to feel affirmed and seen and just like okay within yourself. Number six is looking after your body, your temple, if you so will. <laughs> now, holidays are pretty rough on queer bodies, I would say, especially if you are somebody who struggles with like gender dysphoria, body dysmorphia, any sort of eating disorder. I would just recommend making sure that you have supportive people who check in with you, like if that's friends, if you have a therapist, talk to your therapist beforehand. It's just super cool to know that there is help out there and that it's always a good idea to reach out for help if you need it. And if there is anyone who shames you for your food choices or whatever you do with your body, you send them to me and I'll have a little talk with them. Number seven is probably the most serious and least fun activity, but let me tell you, it's an important one. Depends on where you're living in the world, but most places have helplines, crisis hotlines, LGBTQ plus helplines. Just in case, maybe like look it up on the internet, write it down. Um, and if things go like super tits up with people around you and people ask really shitty questions or just make you feel super unsafe and unseen, maybe they're using the wrong pronouns for you or not calling you by your name, know that there is help out there and you can reach out. Sometimes there are services when you can just like text people, sometimes there are services where you call people, but there's a lot of help out there. And also like a general tip is like talk to your friends, just like texting, even if you're at the dinner table and grandma's being a dick to you, you can just like have your phone at the table and text your friend and being like, bitch, you would not believe what Karen just said. I would say make sure you've got some people to shit talk with. It's, it's, it's very freeing. Oh darling, it is so helpful. <laughs> so that's it folks, that's my seven self-care slash holiday survival tips. I hope they are helpful to you, I hope you can take something from this. If you have any other suggestions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and share them with other people who might be looking for help, uh, connect, make friends, I don't know. <laughs> I really hope that uh, you get through this holiday season affirmed, empowered, and amazed and sparkly. Yes sparkly. You're loved, it gets better, and there is so much love and help out there for you. You just need to reach out and make sure you're with good humans and good energies. Sending so much love and a major interwebs hug your way. <laughs> Take good care and until next time. Bye-bye.